What's up everyone? I am flipping a new house today. Welcome to the house that we're calling the Steel Creek Flip. This is a three bedroom, two bathroom house with about 1,500 square feet. My partner on this deal, Todd, found this from a for sale by owner listing. Here's the guy I'm partnering with on this deal. Nice. After a few months of discussions, Todd and the homeowner had finalized the price around $250,000, resulting in a $50,000 to $60,000 profit. Well, just like everything, this house did go way over budget and went two or three months past the actual original due date. Due date? It's kind of like a baby. This kind of is my baby. Anyway, I'm going to take you on the journey of flipping this house and a project like no other that I've done because I worked alongside, for the most part, a general contractor. Typically, I flip almost everything by myself or remodel by myself. Let's get into it. This here is a three bedroom, two bath, I think 15 to 1700 square feet. We're on a slab. It's actually got a pretty large living room and kitchen space. We need to freshen up the colors in here. And we're pretty much doing a full blown remodel. We're doing the whole thing. I am going to do this in a one video type of deal rather than doing day one through day 20, whatever that is. I do have a partner on this project here. He actually brought me in as a partner. Um, he found this deal pretty cool. He's listing a house just down the road over there for $425,000 and it's under contract for 10,000 more than that. This house we purchased for $250,000. So you can see there's a lot of room to work with, although that one was done by like a TV show series. So I hope you enjoy what we're about to do here. Stay tuned. We have a dumpster coming in. I'm gonna do a little bit of light demo today and uh, we're gonna crush this thing. What the heck is that? I'm not gonna pretend like I'm some kind of environmentalist, but I do recycle all of the metal I get here and take it to a scrapyard for two reasons. For one, yeah, you do get paid a little bit. From a whole house, I might get 100, 150 bucks, especially if there's copper behind some of the walls and the plumbing and the brass fixtures and stuff. But the other reason is it takes a lot less minerals and money, energy, all that to recreate something out of metal. So why not help the earth a little bit? Oh, third reason, it also saves room in your dumpster, right? <laughs> What was that? F you. <laughs> Kitchen demo. Bathroom demo. Other bathroom demo. Although this was the only floor that actually had tile in it in the first place, the previous homeowner already removed all of the other floor in the house, which is amazing. These shrubs are removed and you know besides just the aesthetics or the look of the house by cutting these back it's actually a safety um, function as well whenever you have a lot of shrubs and things blocking your front door in the front of your house it's actually where a lot of uh people feel comfortable breaking in because it can't be seen as i was demoing this tile shower and the vanity and all that over here these lights kept flickering and now that i took apart everything I noticed that a lot of these wires aren't even attached. So don't be scared to do your own electrical because the professional electricians suck as well. <laughs> so it's just a master closet here, but we're gonna do what we can. Put some recessed lights in. It originally had some kind of like a, a tube light here. So we're gonna put four inch recessed lights, probably one there, one there. Super bright closet, case this shelf paint, putty up, all of these markings and stuff. It's gonna look good. I've measured out my recessed light location and made sure they wouldn't be in the way of my upper cabinets later. I have several recessed light installation videos on my channel, so check those out after this video. They are the cheapest and easiest upgrade someone could do to their house after all. I wanna get these done before the drywaller comes in so he can patch up the area of the old light hole. 
So with these recessed lights, this dust bowl is amazing. You don't need a shot vac, vacuum cleaner or anything. All the dust is in there. You can see the disc is in there. I'll have this link down in the description like everything else I'm using here, but all the recessed lights are cut out now. We have four for this main room here and two for this part of the kitchen, wet bar, fridge area. Um, and I think we're ready to get this one wired here in a few days. I don't have enough wire with me right now, but all the other rooms are good. The bathroom over there and the get the master closet over here. Recessed lights are almost finished. If you can't tell already, today is paint day, and if you're not wearing all white, are you really painting? It's like going to the gym. Unless you take pictures, you actually go. If it looks like everything is already kind of painted, well, it is a little bit. It's primed up. So we had the drywallers come in over the past few days, and they skim coated everything, filled in the holes, scraped the ceilings, then sanded everything down, and finally primed up pretty much every surface in this house besides the taped up windows. And then I came over here and already painted the ceilings just in the kitchen and living room so I can install the recessed lights the rest of the way. And today I'm gonna to finish painting the rest of the ceilings in the house. Drywallers are coming back for another final sanding and touch up. I think they call it pointing work. But today we're gonna to get into painting. I was gonna show you some of the things that still need to be touched up, but you just really can't see that kind of detail on any camera, even with the light on. But that's the cool thing about drywallers too, or at least this company, is they'll come back and finish pointing everything up. Then once we're done with the entire house, they will actually come through and do a final, final touch up for incidents like punching holes in walls with the doorknobs and things like that. I am shooting with a brand new camera here, so I hope everything turns out in post-production. I've never edited film shot from this camera before. But for shooting the actual paint, I'm going to use my old tried and true because if I get a little paint on the lens, uh, you know, I can clean that off anyways, but I don't want to get paint on this brand new high-end Sony camera. Here's my ceiling paint from home. It's probably about this full. This is where you make the money. <laughs> Shop for your clearance deals. $15, normally $43. It's the same exact stuff. And I only need a little bit. There's also this ceiling paint here. So I'm gonna just mix this up in there. And that should be enough to do most of the ceilings. And then I might do a separate bedroom or bathroom with some of this other Sherwin-Williams here. As I pour this paint into the bucket, look closely at the color of the new paint. It's a lot darker on the back of the bucket there. They're not the same shades of white, and this causes a major headache for me throughout the remodel, but luckily I just used it in the kitchen ceiling and the closets. As I'm doing this voiceover and video editing, I'm crying inside as I watch myself paint all of this trim and all of these walls. I had no idea what was going to hit me later on in this remodel. Painting sure does take a lot out of you. My gun also kept getting jammed, so I kept having to turn around the little nozzle thing and release some of the paint. Uh, outside of that though, the ceilings, which you, there's no way you can see it on camera, but they actually came out really good. Uh, again, it was just really annoying. You could see probably all my paint sprays down there, and that's to release some of the paint pressure or whatever, unjam the gun. <laughs> Today I'm gonna to take off this fencing and just clean up some of the yard quite a bit.
of my big jobs here is just hauling away a lot of the debris that some of the other people make and just helping out the whole situation. Wait, are those freshly painted door jams in my pickup? Why am I throwing away perfectly fine door jams and trim? It must be trash day too, because it's taking an extra long time. So got here super early, went to Lowe's already, and I'm getting through the day, but I'm so happy to be pretty much done painting besides some accent walls and so on. But I'm actually gonna start changing out some of the light fixtures, and that way I'll also have light to be able to do some of that extra final touch-up paint. Um, but really I can do that final touch-up paint any time during the rest of this remodel because I did paint everything that's gonna be in the way. Um, so today's gonna to be electric day. I am all about the discounts, half off. And this is rough around here, but outlets are really easy to install. Just have to do some sheetrock work here. Regardless of whether this is a fire hazard or not, do not spray foam. I mean, I'm not an electrician, but I don't recommend spray foaming into your outlet boxes. It was a real pain to take this out, and I'm gonna have to do it here, and there, and there, and there, and everywhere else, and it's a real pain to do. They make little styrofoam pads that you can place just on top of all this, and it's really easy to install and take stuff out, like to replace outlets if you need to. Again, I'm not sure how fireproof safe this is, and did they even use the fireproof foam, or did they just use regular insulation foam? Um, you know, so many questions here. Either way, it's a pain. Do not spray foam in there coming from a non-electrician. That's my recommendation. I'm not gonna count them all, but there's the one that we did on camera, three or four or five over there, and then quite a few all around this kitchen area. All these, these three here, and then a couple of light switches out here. One, two, I wanna show you that those are done, right? That's what new ones look like. These are what the old ones looked like. Paint and all. So I've spent maybe two, two and a half hours putting in 17 different outlets and light switches. Let me just tell you what electricians typically charge per outlet or switch. At a minimum it's 25 bucks and it can go up to 50 bucks. Again, per outlet or switch. So if we do that math here and we do 17 outlets times $25 at a minimum, in just a couple of hours, I have saved us $425. Now you can round that down to 400. Each outlet with the plate cost me $2 when you buy in bulk. $400 made in two and a half hours. house myself. We have the flooring coming in on Monday, a couple days from now. I'm just going to do a final roll of the wall paint and some of the blue paint around here. But I did dress for the occasion except for my shoes. I didn't bring the backup shoes so I'm going to have to go and just wear my socks. But I gave it another sweeping. That makes about five rounds of sweeping in this house already. And uh, But I'm ready to paint. I did get this light installed so it's going to help paint this room quite a bit. <laughs> I need to turn this off. It's cold. I'm back at the property today. It's been about three weeks or so since I've been here because of the Christmas holiday and not too much has changed in this house. There are a couple of problems that have arisen or rose since being gone and even a little bit before starting with the drywall here. We had a guy that I had worked with before doing the drywall. He did it for a really reasonable price in the past. We've already talked about you know his work a little while ago, I believe. But he kind of left us hanging here a little bit. It didn't finish the job, so we had to get a different drywall guy in here to finish things up. 
that wasn't a money issue because my original guy was cheaper to begin with, so we're break even there, but time wise, we're behind. But the huge issue that came up today that I'm noticing is that when we first toured this place with the GC, and I'm not blaming anybody, it could have been miscommunication or whatever. You see this door right here? These hollow zero panel doors, I don't know what you call them, these cheap old school doors, this is what was already in the house, right? They were already in here. And we had talked about getting rid of them and getting a six panel door, something a little bit more modern. And yet, not only did we replace these for exactly what we already had, now I have to prime it and then paint it, probably with two coats of paint. So there's more labor, expense, time, all that. And they had to rehang brand new doors. This is brand new trim, everything, on every single door in the house. It's gonna be thousands of dollars to replace the doors that were already just like this for the same exact thing. So it's a little frustrating. I don't know where the disconnect was there with communication or who knows. Why do we replace them with the exact same thing that we were trying to get rid of? It doesn't make sense. The other thing that really sucks about the drywall situation is I had already painted the ceilings. The ceilings actually look just fine. I'm not sure why the new drywall guy came in and fixed the ceilings. That was the one thing that was done just right. So now I have to try to match up the ceiling paint, which this wasn't perfect regular ceiling paint. So I'm gonna have to paint this whole thing. We had two drywallers come in here yet. It's like this everywhere. It's hard to tell on camera when you're looking at textures of things, but I'm going coming back and doing this myself. I don't have all my right tools with me, but I just gotta smooth this stuff out. And this is a jumbo plate. It's an oversized plate and you still have half an inch there and half an inch there. I'm gonna put the camera down, smooth this out, sand it, paint it, and it'll be good. The dumbest mistake I made on this house was the easiest one I could have avoided, but you remember that discount ceiling paint I bought? Well, since we had the drywaller come back in to touch up some of the walls, he touched up just a small patch on the ceiling in this kitchen here. This kitchen ceiling is one of the only ceilings in this house where I had to use a unique color combination of paints because I didn't want to go back to the store and grab regular ceiling paint. I've tried to match up the ceiling now three or four times and I'm just not getting it. So I'm gonna to have to cut out a patch, get it color matched at Lowe's, and then come back and, and paint it. And hopefully that works. It has to be the right sheen and the right color. So it's gonna to be tough. The reason I'm doing it this way, instead of painting the whole ceiling, is I don't know if you've ever painted the ceiling before, but it is ridiculously hard. So this light was never centered, so I'm going to go ahead and center it here, which means more patchwork with the drywall. And of course, it's going to be the same thing over here, not even close to centered. I'm also going a little higher than where I was because the mirror comes up 42 inches and the counter is higher than it used to be. So really half these holes will be covered up by the mirror too. old work light boxes and they have these clips here that basically grab onto the drywall as you screw in these three screws here okay so it does cover it luckily but just barely i was worried that this circle was going to come on the outside of this here and i'm using this in several places on this house okay that's lucky wiring is simple you have your copper you have your hot or your black and then you have your neutral which is usually white and they just, I mean, it's just matching colors here. Ground to ground. I get so many spam calls, it's ridiculous. And I wouldn't answer them, but I run a property management business. So I have to answer every single call. <laughs> and it's getting, I can't even record a video without five or six calls. I'm gonna leave it like this until I get the mirror up because if I put the glass down, it might get in the way. This just makes it easier. I don't wanna break the glass and I don't wanna have trouble getting the mirror on.
here with a different spray gun today. It's this little tiny handheld Graco, and I'm gonna use it for these doors. First, I need to put a coat of primer on there. I don't know if I've already told you this. It's now been a couple weeks since I've last recorded, but one or two coats of primer and then one or two coats of trim and door paint. So I have all that here today. I also have all the baseboards and trim around the uh, doors and everything all caulked and ready to go. So primer and trim paint, let's give it a go. I just taped up the hinges before I started spraying. These are brushed nickel and I'm actually gonna be replacing them with black hinges here shortly. So I don't care if there's too much paint on them. I will remove the doors before I do the actual trim. Since the doors are smooth, just in case it starts to look funny and there's splatter on there, I do have a foam roller as backup. Which I've foam rolled doors like this before and they look just fine. It's starting to feel like a flash from the past. I think that's a saying. I got the Best City Design shirt on. I'm recording with my old camera. So this is the great OG I was talking about here. And I have it full of primer right now. And so you just open this flap and you squeeze all the air out until you stop hearing air. You close up the lid and you're good to go. I just need to prime it a little bit. So I'm gonna turn it to prime, shoot it upside down. And then you're good to go. Hard to tell on camera, but that looks pretty good. You can kind of see some tiger striping here, and that's just how it goes when you're doing the first coat, and you can really see behind it. But I think that looks pretty good for the first base. So many times I've stranded, cast away when I'm not sure. High heat. No stranger in the sky. Even though I woke up at 5 a.m. today, I'm actually really excited to be at the house because it is probably the last big day. I could see myself maybe doing two more like small half days here, but it's the last big day on this property. <laughs> we got our toilets, we got some shrubs and mulch and just a lot of, I mean, it's gonna be a big day today, but I think it's gonna be one of the last ones. So let's, let's hit it. The group of guys are coming in. They're gonna lay down the rest of the mulch, bury or plant a few shrubs and really just pour a ton of dirt around the entire house and fill in all these paver spots and so on. Clean up the yard. Um, it's trash day tomorrow, so put these out there. But today's a big landscaping day for them. I'm here a couple hours earlier, so I'm gonna finish up some electrical and like the toilets and, and things like that. Before we go inside, the last thing I'll say is Tessa was here yesterday, so I haven't seen this house since she finished up a few of the cutting paint details. So I think it's... Very cool. Very nice. Woo! <laughs> this is looking so good. Need to paint the fireplace still. Let's see, oh, these walls are clean. Super cool, super cool. All right, boom, very nice. Over here in the master, really cool. And I was super worried that she was gonna paint the inside of these windows blue, and she didn't. Awesome work. She painted in here. It's all white, so you can't really tell, but I did get this light installed. Very cool, very cool. All right. Like I said, I'm getting some helpers in today too, so we're gonna be able to put this the mirror isn't here anymore. I'm gonna put the mirror up today with the guys because it's super heavy, and then I can finish installing those lights up there. And again, we're so close. We're so close. <laughs>
There's a ton of worlds around smoke alarms in North Carolina and probably everywhere really. But there's old construction where a house is already built and you're remodeling it and new construction rules. Good job, buddy. All right, so that wraps it up. I hope you enjoyed this video. And I just kind of want to dive in through the updates throughout this house as far as the, the money goes. So we did buy this house for $250,000. We did pay the GC around $35,000, the drywaller $4,000, myself for painting and some overages $3,500, and then another $5,200 for some of the miscellaneous and another $1,000 for landscaping. The miscellaneous are all the things I bought like the light fixtures, the doorknobs, the everything, right? The, even that back door back there, $400. So I'll crush these numbers when I get home to my computer, but we are listing this house right now for $360,000. And then there's the realtor fees that come off of that, which is about 5% for the buying and selling side. So you reduce that from that 360. And at the end of the day, we're left with what this is down below if it sells for the 360 price. And I won't publish this video actually until it does go under contract so we can really get that price firm and set for you. I'm gonna walk around with the camera here just so you have some movement going on behind me instead of just a plain background that you've seen a ton of times. But yeah, this house was crazy. Would I do something like this again? Yes, I guess the biggest thing I regret doing is getting a house that was an hour away from where I live. That was the biggest headache, is driving here for an hour, driving back home for an hour. It really takes a lot of time away from the actual work to get done. And I'm driving into downtown Charlotte. So that is also working around the traffic and the rush hour. Long story short, buy a house within 30 minutes of where you live. I've always heard that rule and I've never actually done it. All my houses always seem to be an hour away. <laughs> Another rule that I haven't really finalized and locked in, but working with the GC, I think the general contractor got paid more than I did, even though I put the risk into the property. I've been to this property, me and Tessa, probably 30, 40 times. I think he's been here like seven or eight. So far more work involved and his hourly rate is definitely a lot higher than mine on this project. Got the toilet in and it's been sitting here for a few days waiting for the plumber. And I got the elongated one for the master bathroom and it's set right next to the master bathroom there. And I have the guest bathroom toilet, which is a round one, which I shouldn't have gotten in the first place, but the bathroom is a little bit squished. I had that box there. And so I have the boxes right where the bathroom should be waiting for the plumber. And he did come in, but <laughs> for some reason the round one is here, but I got the elongated box there. I don't know. It's a, I don't know what the logic is here, but <laughs> we got the round toilet installed over here. So next time it'll either be 100% the GC's work, I'm completely hands off, except for I may mess around by framing a mirror or something like that, or I am 100% on board and I hire out my own helper. I don't think there's any benefit of having that in between. There was a lot of double work with having these doors replaced for no reason. These panel doors here is exactly what this property had in the beginning. Why we replaced them and reframed, I don't know. The drywaller again had a touch parts of the walls that weren't even that bad. So I had to paint this entire house twice. Again, another miscommunication and 
double work on my part. And then we're still trying to figure out where he came up with that $35,000 for the GC because there was tile work, there was laying the floors at $2 a square foot max, there were cabinets and some plumbing work. And $35,000 and the doors, okay. $35,000 though for that kind of thing is way over what I could find a really premium company to do that work for. Anyway, this is not meant to be a rant video, but at the end of the day, there were a lot of lessons learned that I wanna to try to give you knowledge on and just something I could watch back later in the future and remember not to do some of these things again. At the end of the day though, I learned so much from this property and I'm extremely glad that I got to do a partnership deal with this, especially with Todd. I think we have a lot more going on in the future and there's ways where we can really just maximize our strengths and just build off of each other and have a little empire going. But thanks for watching the second tour with this all behind me. If you enjoy this kind of content, hit that like button, subscribe to this video because I have another video coming out where I'm flipping a house for like $10,000 all in and that's expecting to raise the rent on that house by about $200 and really lock in a more premium tenant, I guess you could say. Someone who might appreciate the house a little bit more because it's a nicer house. So, um, so follow me, subscribe, whatever. I will see you all on that next video. Peace. How old are you? Four. Yeah. How old are you? Two. Yeah. Good job helping, guys. <laughs> oh. Say cheese again. No, mommy's already dead. Oh, okay. <laughs>